Welcome to The Advocates, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the same necessary tools for a sinner society. I will be talking about 2023 election in view, Nigeria under a global microscope. Raymond Nkanibi will be talking about the great resignation, the challenge of talent retention in a post-pandemic labor market. Comfort Boots will be talking about ageism, while Hussein Olarewaju will be talking about the Nigerian concept of what is okay or what is not. Today, expect interesting and informative discussions as usual. We will be back after this break. 2023 election in view, Nigeria under a global microscope. At this point, the international community has its spotlight on Nigeria and her activities. Just recently at the World Economic Forum, in Danvaux, Switzerland. Experts have identified the top five risks in Nigeria that, have, that may hamper the country's growth and development. According to his new report, which is the 18th edition of the Global Risk Report for 2023, terrorist attack, debt crisis, and cost of living are the top three challenges faced in the country. In Mauritania, President Mohamed Buhari was honored by the Abu Dhabi Peace Forum with award for strengthening peace in Africa, said there was a need to inculcate values and principles of tolerance and peace in educational institutions, and particularly among the youths. This big question is, how has this reflect the current reality of the nation, which is plagued by inflation, secessionist crisis, insecurity, and kidnapping? Jacinda Arden, the 42-year-old Prime Minister of New Zealand on Wednesday, January the 18th, announced her stepping down as a New Zealand's Prime Minister. She said there is a need for a new shoulder to carry on the country's leadership. Nigeria and other African leaders have a lot to learn that the nation come first before safe. Jacinda Ardern's achievements on steering New Zealand through the 2019 Christchurch mosque shootings and the White Island volcanic eruption, climate change, social housing, reducing poverty, the COVID-19 pandemic, and its ensuing recession as one she was particularly proud of. The invitation of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Peter Obi, Rabi Okwakonsu, and the INEC chair to the Chatham House in London are proof that the international community has vested interest in the Nigerian affairs as they were given opportunity to share their ideas for Nigeria in view of the 2023 general election. It is important to note that that is a global platform and whatever is being said there, we echo and reflect the Nigerian image for years to come. The upcoming election is close and a new era is around the corner. Our leaders cannot continue to turn a blind eye to the things happening in the country. We need a leader who will consciously restore Nigeria's image and multilateral relations with the international community. If things are not put in check come 2023 general elections, the country might fall into a pariah state. Let me conclude by reflecting on the words of Jacinda Ardern, the current and outgoing Prime Minister of New Zealand. You can't ask other people to believe you and vote for you if you don't back yourself. This could be interpreted as Politicians should always show responsibility and be confident in their leadership abilities. Gentlemen, we are here again. So, you saw what happened during the last this uh, this week. This week was filled with a lot of activities from Peter Obi's president invitation. I was lecture in chat to Chatham House, and they followed by the INEC chair. No, and then yesterday was Rabi Ukwakonso, where they were given opportunity to discuss their ideas for Nigeria. In the same vein, or the same period, uh, ongoing economic, World Economic Forum in Danvaux, Switzerland, where uh, you saw what they said about the top problems in Nigeria, insecurity, that is terrorism, inflation, you know, they stated these things. And then the same vein to President Buhari, they say, see, like this week was just so busy. 
for the world. President Boyer being honored as a peace and uh, giving a peace award by, for the Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi Peace Forum in Mauritania. The question is, how peaceful is Nigeria now? And considering so, the whole thing, so, so, so I want to hear your thoughts on this. For me, I think I want to come from the aspect of the identify issues. Take, for example, debt. You see, uh, uh, there are some hardship that is self-created. Like you see when there will be fuel, and some filling station will hold it just to increase the price. Or some people who want to hide under the stock they have, they bought for like 100 naira. And when they discover the scarcity, they will want to hold it, they want to increase the price to the current reality. Or say 150 naira. We are not being sincere to ourselves. It comes to take a responsibility. So then when you look at debt, for example, you are trying to help people. So debt is probably to. Uh, expand your business or to solve one problem, but it's creating more problem in the sense that you're asking somebody who says, I need financial assistance to now start paying 120% interest per annum, meaning that you're actually taking all the profit or the capital. At a point, it becomes very difficult for such person to actually uh, get things, you know, working or get things to, to be the way it's expected to be. Do you understand? Yeah. Then you have some people who are trying to reduce it, but it's still at 72% per annum. So there is no how you want to go when it is difficult. You are thinking, you, you can't go the business because you are thinking on how to solve that, that interest rate that is high. Do you understand? Okay. So you are, you are trying to outsmart, you'll be outsmarting, pushing the, the responsibility back to the people in the market. And you know, it, it is, the, there is need for debt restructuring to meet the demands of different markets. Not like a, a particular debt, when you go to a bank, before now you see bank will say they want to see your collateral, they want to enter your room and all those kind of things. You know, digital world has made things easy. We don't have data. We don't have a centralized data to make things, but at least things are getting better, right? We need to now start structuring beyond just, uh, I'm giving you this loan at 10% per, uh, per month, 5% per month, to tailor into the kind of business. There are some business that need daily floats. There are some business that need six month grace period to be able to function very well. You know, we need to think. The credit structure has to change. Yeah, well, 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 I kind of agree with you, but my sense is that the context of um, what the World Economic Forum had, the forecast they have had for Nigeria has to do with national debt and not necessarily um, debt of private businesses. Okay. I know that ultimately it has to do with the... the, the the, the, the collective yeah the end the yeah, last yeah. person on the street, like the sure. businesses and individuals so I agree with you um, of course Nigeria has a, a debt a debt crisis I I if I if I've not forgotten the debt deficit for the recently past 2023 budget is over 70 percent and there's an indication that for every one naira that we end we earn we are going to spend about um, 90 kobo to service debt. So that gives a graphic picture of the debt crisis that we currently face uh, in the country. So to meet this problem, um, it's actually ties to your to the uh, theme of your of your pitch, which is the 2023 general election. So what it means is that the next president who is going to succeed from Buhari must know that he has a he has a serious issue of restructuring our 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 our, our, our balance sheets. You mm. understand? And to do that, mm. we have to invest so much in we have to devise ways to earn revenue because. If you don't earn revenue, you cannot be able to service them. Exactly. So we must be able to earn enough revenue so that we can actually be able to meet up with this high debt profile. But what strikes me most in your uh, presentation is um, the situation in, in New Zealand. Uh, the Prime Minister who has just indicated that she doesn't have enough tank, she doesn't have enough in the tank to, 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 to go further. She's so, so, so it just gives you an impression. It's, I think it's a, very, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lesson a lot for, for a lot of leaders, particularly for in this part of the country, world where we come from, where leaders don't see beyond their noses. So this is a lady who desperately been for two years. She understands that because she has listened to the sound of her body, she knows that she cannot be able to go for that. And she has, she has, she's willing to put her personal interest in the back seat and putting the country's interest forward. All I hear where we have a so-called top presidential flag bearer whose body is clearly telling him that you can't go for that, yet he's still telling Nigeria that no, 
I have to go further. So I think that particular candidate has a lesson, a lot of lesson to learn in the conduct of Jacinda. Uh, just in the I, I'm, I'm glad you're just saying this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This. Yeah. Um, um, uh, but I'm uh, comfort boots. Um, be, just before I bring you in, I still want you to say something about lessons we can learn from Jacinda Adams. This woman, she was elected or sworn in or started her role as Prime Minister of New Zealand in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2017 at the age of 37. Yes. In the process, she was pregnant. She gave birth to her child in, while in office. She continued the crisis in the country in 2019 where uh, a mosque was attacked. The, the college, okay. uh, church, church Christ Mosque in New Zealand. And uh -huh. then she, the role she played, the leadership she assumed to um, manage the crisis so that it doesn't uh -huh. de degenerate into a religion. And then it continued. We had during COVID-19 era, she was, able, she was among the top leaders among other women too that were heads of government were able to manage the COVID-19 um, pandemic problem in their country very well. They were able to cope the further spread of COVID-19 virus uh, in their country and then it went on volcanic eruption, natural disasters, economic problem, fighting poverty and now she's saying okay I've done my part, I'm exhausted, I don't think I can continue anymore, I want to step down even though she can she has she has she could have continued but no i don't want to continue let another person do um, continue for where i stop i just want to step down and put my interest aside what's your take on this i just want to hear your thoughts on this okay um, thank you um, very much um elijah um I, I love the fact that you you gave a rundown of her accomplishments and um I, i'm sorry but this is my opinion i actually feel sad that she's stepping down at this point because that means from the time, you know, from 37 to 42, she's been able to build a cabinet. She's been able to build, um, what, what do you call it, the kitchen, the kitchen cabinet, people around her that can help her, for me, take her across the finish line. So uh, sometimes, yes, in leadership, we should be able to say, okay, you know what, it's time for me to step down or to leave because I can't continue. But also, what about the people who have been with you in the trenches from the beginning? What is your message then saying to them? That what you would get to a certain point and then you will not um, fi um, finish it. Then what's the point of having in quote aeons to hold your hands up when you are not strong enough? So I'm sorry at this point. I honestly don't think she should have resigned unless it is a life threatening. Then yes, there's issue of mental health. Yes, there's the issue of even her physical body, maybe even home affairs. But you see, all these things will still not will, don't disappear. She's had a stellar record. But for me, she's had a strong cabinet because she couldn't have done it on her own. So even with the ability to say, you know what, I need to leave here, leadership is also about the other people that are watching you, the other people who have been with you, the other people who have been your sounding board and probably are looking at it that, okay, at the end of it, you will pass the button to them. So kudos to her. Um, but honestly, I think she should have pressed the tape. Thank you very much, um, Comfort Boots. Thank you very much. I, I like your idea on this. I think you wanted that. She was a strong boy. You wanted her to still remain in office. But you see, she, everyone has a right to know. In her own yeah. words, she said, a leader has, has mm -hmm. is good for a leader to know when to, <laughs> you know, yeah. when to call it. I good. agree. So it's our own choice but to I make. So, I agree, but I want us to look at leadership also as sacrifice. She is, I mean, her tenure will soon be over. And I'm talking about the group that she's working with. So leadership is also about those other people. It's not just about you. And as I said, if, it's, if it is a life-threatening decision, uh, whatever, okay, of course you have to go out. But I'm just saying that we should also look at that. As a strong woman, I mean, we don't give up. Please, please, Okay, please, please. I'm very <laughs> sure she is dismissed that aspect of her. So it's, the reason is best known to her. So whichever it is, yes. I'm sure they will get somebody from her cabinet yes. to take over eventually okay. because this next thing so is not even interested i want raymond yeah, you okay. know I, I like what raymond was saying about um you know um the world economic forum at, at this point i don't even know why we're still why there is still imagine us that place because we have a lot of issues as you, you know you gave that beautiful breakdown about you know the, the budget deficit i don't understand it, a world economic forum that still looks at us and still gives us money we are already impoverished. We are not using the money properly. We do not have um, uh, um, a leadership in place. Why would you know? It's just like taking a loaded gun and giving a kid. Why would you do that? And so I don't know what I, I, I. That's the part of it that you know concerns me. What is the end game? Why are we being given all this 
of money with no accountability and then we now pack ourselves we go for a, a forum that tells us that oh you know what you guys are in deep doo doo you know you guys are in deep doo doo and you're going to still pay us our money if you don't want to hear then they store it then we go back to them cap in hand and then they still give us the money um i i in tying it into the 2023 elections i'm sorry i don't see i'm sorry i don't see it i like to be positive um about this but there are so many factors including the three that you know were listed at the world economic forum and i'm looking at the three front runners and i'm wondering okay who is going to have a handle on this um um the new zealand the new new zealand prime minister's um quote uh doesn't work for us uh, felix how are you saying that uh, we should back ourselves it has just made it easier for the politicians you, 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 you not have to support yourself that at least be confident about <laughs> show that. what you can do as <laughs> raymond pointed out about you know one of the candidates that it seems like his body is failing him and in his opinion then if he's going to use that Quote, he's going to say he's backing himself. He's backing himself to go on for. But perhaps he has not been communicating in clear terms what he really wants us to do. Tell him, telling us what because this same candidate has been speaking in in, um, in some esoteric languages. You know, some esoteric <laughs> languages that needs further interpretation. So backing yourself, means it, telling us what you at, want to do. But at this point, we have to also remove the eyes from him and put it on us. He cannot walk into Asuba. None of them can walk into Asuba unless you and I are. Ah, thank you very much. We lost so, that. Uh, so I, th I think I get what Comfort is trying to say. You know? Do it. So where is our goal? Where are we going to take accountability? Exact, exactly. Comfort. Thank you for that. Let me just quickly chip in, uh, chip in something. Like Raymond was saying, you know, the loans that we are talking about should be safe repayable loan. Just like what he's saying, we, we can see that is they are not safe repayable loans. We should be more focused on loans that are more safe repayable, that can generate revenue itself, service itself, and run. Because there is no government if you want to actually develop that you don't go on debt. It's difficult. But the most important thing is, if you look at it, the uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand, she said, has a good cabinet. But we have here in Nigeria where we are using the favoritism, further character to choose people who are not even up to the tax. You know, we don't have data to work with and there's a lot of mess. So if we want to beyond the gener generational change of power from what we currently see, because all these people are the same face we've been seeing over 30 years ago. They are not different, yeah. right? So we need gener generational change of power. Then we, as an individual, we need to take responsibility, right? And say we are ready beyond those uh, candidates. All right. Thank you very much, lady and gentlemen, for your apt contribution. Raymond Nkanibi is next after the break. Just stay with us.